Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, NFL Draft Analysis. Cole McDonald, Hawaii, put up huge numbers. We're going to look at one game, start to finish, all the way through. I think you all are really going to enjoy it, see exactly what the film says, not just the stat sheet. We're diving into the nuance, the details. Hopefully, you all enjoy it. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> All right, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support as this channel continues to grow. In addition, you want to get nuts, you've dived into a bunch of this content recently, please think about joining in, okay? Hit the membership on the main page, you get a badge after your name, the badge changes colors the longer you're a member, plus you get to use the emojis in the live stream, have fun with that. I appreciate the support for the channel, let's dive into the video. All right, before we get going here, I just want to make sure I'm really explicit again. This is one game, okay? This is a snapshot in a season of a career of a prospect. So it's one game, yes, it's for a championship. Yes, I think it's important to always look at the most important games of the year when you're evaluating a player or a prospect or anyone in any sort of field. And so that's what I wanted to do with this championship game. Obviously it didn't go their way as far as Hawaii, but I think that there are a lot of things we can learn from this video. In addition, I wanna make sure I preface this. If you didn't know it and you're a fan of the channel, I'm not a run and shoot expert, okay? So some of this, the vast majority of this is strictly quarterback focused. So I'll go into the weeds a little bit, like I try to, to understand holistically what's going on as an offense, as a defense, but I am by no means an expert as far as some of the schemes that you'll see in this video. So just wanted to make sure I lay it out there before we get started. So let's dive into it. Hopefully y'all enjoy. All right, Cole McDonald, Hawaii. Love it. Let's get it going. A little run and shoot to get us started here. Mountain West Conference Championship game. Fired up. See what they've got locked in here on a pretty good start for McDonald. Come out. Again, we're going to see a lot of stuff that is probably a little unorthodox when we're talking offense, or at least for me, I guess not if you're in the run and shoot world. But these little quarter rolls, especially going to your left here, a little backpedal out. It's great when it works out pass protection wise. Nice job right here. You can see Cole coming back, setting his feet, all his cleats in the ground, able to get through that read, come right back down, check it down. Got a nice ability to take the yards that are there for him. Two by two. Middle field closed. Man, and this is a theme we're going to see a lot this game is uh, Boise State just said, we're better than you and you can't get open versus us. And uh, Cole does a nice job right here, turning it down, not forcing a ball downfield. Again, you know, I wouldn't say is the, is the most athletic guy in the draft by any means, but that's a big parting of the seas. Two hands on the ball, up in the pocket, get vertical, get what you can get, get down, protect yourself, smart play. Third and two, three by one. Again, middle field open this time. See what we got going here, run scheme wise. I can't tell. Like the tackle pulling. This looks like a it's just a little power read option. Pulling around, read ninety nine right here at the defensive end. He comes down. We pull it. We got the lead blocker with the guard. We miss at left tackle. Kind of screws up the whole play. Should have been a better play than it was. So theoretically, just so I don't want to get caught up in the weeds here as far as what we're doing, quarterback evaluation. But right here, we are reading this defender. This tackle is looking to step down, seal off 44, and we are reading this defender. So if he comes down, we're going to keep it playing quarterback. And if he hangs outside, if he comes outside, we're going to hand it off to the back. He comes down. So now we pull it. We got the pulling guard coming around, not blocking him. So it should be coming through for the first one that shows. Unfortunately, when you miss 44, the whole play kind of implodes on itself. So is this on the quarterback? No. Should it have been a better play? Yeah. A borderline hold too. Tackle. Get okay, nice job getting, oh, there it is. Not borderline. It was. The worst part about these flags is when they throw it and it like hits people. Now this is on the bounce, I think. 
Like what's worse than actually actually getting called for a hold is getting hit by the flag. I've actually seen it hit people in the face and that's not funny, but it is funny when it hits them. All right, next series. Actually, no, this is after the penalty. Two by two. Big old out to the field. Again, that little quarter roll. The footwork at the back end for me is, you know, a little heel clicky. I don't think he has the strongest arm in the draft by any means. We'll talk about his release as we keep going. And it doesn't help to get an absolute terrible capital L by the left tackle here. I don't care if he thinks that's the left guards guy or not. I don't know the run and shoot pass protections, but I do know that you probably don't want to get in the habit of get, letting guys run through the B gap. That might be the guards guy, actually. I don't want to put it all on the left tackle. Either way, pass protection, getting blasted. Ball's not a bad ball. It's I would say it's on him as opposed to out in front of him. But we'll see the accuracy thing become a, become a concern as this game gets deeper and deeper. Fourth down and short. Going for it. Love it. Three by one. Middle field closed. Man. Actually, middle field open. My mistake. We're doing full rollout. Get a little flat route. A little rub route. This is kind of a cool concept to me. You know, I don't know what you call this coverage. I don't really care what you call it, but this is basically man locked up out here. And then they're basically playing a variation of quarter, quarter, half. And you get a run player up here. So you come out right here. So really they're trying to get a rub on something that doesn't exist down here, coming in for the rub. And one of these guys comes out for just a quick little flat right on him. Easy completion. Nothing easy about it, actually. Roll into your left. But once that defender bubbles over that number one receiver down here to the bottom, this is going to be a first down no matter what. So nice concept, nice job being able to roll to your left and make that throw. Nothing easy about this. Getting over there, lined up. You see him turn his shoulders. Now, this isn't a great one to, to talk about his release just because he's on the run, but I'll, I'll slow it down just to get a good picture of it. It's definitely long. I mean, he drops that thing, the tip below the waist. Comes around, comes out kind of, I don't know if it's three-quarter or like a push. It's almost like a long Philip Rivers. I like Philip Rivers' release. I know people don't like it and hate it on it for a long time, but it's efficient, and he he maximizes. He's not the hardest throw in the world, but he's a great anticipator. You know, you don't see the same anticipation, obviously, in the run and shoot with some of these things that have to be read routes down the field. Love the footwork right here from McDonald at the top of his drop. Quarter roll, no, no heel click, beautiful. All his cleats in the ground. Let's see if we can see it from the back end here. Watch that at the top of his drop. Really tight hitch. Uh, we're going to get guarded out. Either way, nice quick release. Again, underneath stuff. Great job operating this offense with the different options that it allows those receivers inside to do to kind of protect yourself with essentially check downs. Two by two. Again, middle field close. Man. I mean, you tell me, what is the route at the top supposed to be? By the number two. That helps when the number one just is getting jacked at the line of scrimmage. There's no good options here. A little whip route in and out by the number two down here to the bottom of the screen. Great footwork again. Love the base that he's throwing from. Nice accuracy on these underneath. <clears throat> kind of not quick, but almost outlet type throws. Looking to take a shot down the field with the vertical element of this, you know, going from right to left, a lot of full field reads back. That's as good as it gets right there. I wish you could see his feet. As good as it gets. Really nice, right on him, strike. And you can see when he's accurate, this offense is really rolling. Now, obviously, this game doesn't go their way. And you can see the deficiencies and some of the consistency with the accuracy. But for instance, right here, Again, no, you know, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the footwork just because it's a different offense and he'll probably run in the league with the run and shoot stuff. Quarter roll to the left. I will tell you that I do love the top of his drop. It doesn't matter what offense you're in. When you hitch and reset and you have that base with all your cleats in the ground, normally you should be really successful on a consistency basis. Now, he isn't, but he does have flashes of that footwork that I think allow him to have the potential. See just what I'm talking about here. All his cleats in the ground at the back. 
you know, he comes up, up a little bit more than I would want. And then again, the release, I think, is probably the, the thing that's going to scare a lot of people off. It looks actually more over the top right there. But on a whole, it, it just comes down and out a little bit more than you would think. And it just looks awkward. It hurts my shoulder watching. You know, I, I don't know his history by any means, but it, it, it looks like it hurts to throw. Nice job right here. They do a really nice job with these two by two RPO slants. Talk about the read here. He does a really nice job of working this outside slant. They get a bunch in this game, but really they are reading this second level defender away from the run. So we're RPO in this way. Quarterback's reading this as the conflict defender, and the read is one, two, two. And usually if one's not there, two will be there with this huge window because everyone caves down with the one, the inside slant. So just a nice job, really simple RPO that just about everybody runs if you run an RPO. But he does a really nice job of operating that outside slant that, I, that you don't see done at a high level very often. You can see it right there, just eyeball on 25. 25 doesn't hang tight. Ball's coming out. Nice job. Accurate. Again, that you know, five yard throw, he seems to make a living off of. Two by two, looks like middle field closed. You know, interesting decision here, running the ball. This is just second and short, so just trying to get a first down. Reading the end man on the line of scrimmage, I think he's not, not in the picture right here. Just off on our right, their left. See him eyeballing him, zone read. He comes down, got it, got the edge. Protect yourself, get out of bounds. <clears throat> I would say protect yourself full speed through the white. Middle field closed, man. Eh, maybe not. Middle field open. Definitely man down here to the bottom. Quarter principles everywhere else. That's a push off. It's a big go throw down here to the bottom of the screen. One, two, three. You know, that's a big old hitch too. It looks like someone at the warning track throwing a third. It's everything you got. That's a push off from the offensive wide receiver. You catch it. Nice. That's definitely look at 26 here at the bottom. Right on the 20, right on the 18. He's like, you're bench pressing me. You totally did. Either way, nice job. Offense. I like it. Obviously, you hear, you watch this channel, know I like to give our wide receivers a shot down the field to make these type of plays. And again, this is this is my issue a little bit with this offense or just this pass protection more than anything else. When you do these quarter rolls, you just put the tackles in a bind. You know, you you're it's really hard to throw a deep ball when there are guys right in front of you at your feet, can't follow through, you know, things like this happen. Again, just so y'all don't think I'm losing my mind. Let's watch that receiver on the bottom left. Push off right there. That space doesn't get created by itself. Does he make the catch? Yep, nice. Right on the body. Fair catch. All right, first down. Oh, no, second down. Must have been a run. Again, he doesn't, and it, it, granted, it is this offense where so much of it is Quarter roll, one side, come back to the other side, work the back side. No to the left, comes back to the right. Reason 800 billion to not have your backs cut in the backfield. Like, I just don't understand it. Gets hit, strong, nice pocket presence. So I put this in here just for the pocket presence. No, no, yes, yes, yes. Boom, while you're getting to hit. Two by two. Middle field open. Nope, closed. That's really, this is a good example of pre-snap idea, post-snap confirmation, RPO. There's that same RPO we talked about. Outside zone, wide zone, whatever you want to call it. Double slant, and he's working that outside slant again. You know, that's a borderline give to me, just what that inside linebacker does. We'll see it from the backside. 25, we're reading 25 for the RPO. He moves it all, I guess. He's going to give it to him. That's a nice throw. Again, shown his consistency with the accuracy and the underneath stuff. Two by two, middle field closed. Easy to see. Here comes a little heat, it looks like. Again, quarter roll. 
a little whip in a corner. Penalty. See the top of his drop here. Again, he's got a nice little knack to changing platforms. He does this little jump throw to the underneath kind of check down type routes pretty consistently. To his left, oh, you'd like to see him throw that corner. This is the same concept, just to the left now. I would, you know, again, it, I don't love saying exactly what the read is because I'm not used to playing in this offense. But I can tell you that normally these deep routes are the first read and these little underneath check down whip type routes are the second read. And so you're trying to push this thing down the field, especially as just a core tenant of the run and shoot. Now that release by the number two doesn't help where he kind of dips inside, gets behind the number one, but you'd love to see that corner. Throw that ball to the top left pylon. Either way, nice job getting it down underneath. Find a completion, move the ball. You know, again, this to me is, is not what you want to see at the back of a drop. He hits that thing, goes right up on his toes. Now he's able to, to still deliver the ball accurately underneath and in, and in close windows. But I think it impacts his ability to drive the ball down the field, both deep balls and consistently even mid-tier balls. You don't see this play very often. The old fake Statue of Liberty pass. Fake Statue of Liberty, over-the-top pass, and that's P.I. on that number two, for sure. He grabbed him right there. Again, you know, this is great if it works. I've never actually seen this ball handling before either, so pretty interesting with that. Never really love taking the ball out of my right hand for on play actions, but for here you got to. Probably be helpful to have a plan to go out and get 28 too. He kind of disrupts this whole thing. Either way, not a, not a great execution down in the red zone. See it here. See a handful of things that just you know. Love to see him get in the end zone right here. Just lead. Variation of zone. Let me get a little head start by 98 here. This might be a free play. You got to find a way to get in the end zone right here. Leg drive, explode. Stopped within the one. Next series, that's a field goal. Throw a little out to the left. Quick out-ish. Sky mail that thing. You know, now we start seeing some accuracy issues start coming into play here a little bit more consistent as this game goes on. And so, you know, whether this is a timing route or whether he's waiting for this guy to decide what to do as like an option route, to me, he doesn't have his feet settled, doesn't have a good base, and that thing comes out, and that's a pretty significant miss. Rolling that way, one-on-one, -on -one, got to be able to give him a chance. Three-by-one, middle field closed. Again, like the decisiveness. If it's not there, don't force it. Not a lot of places to run. Basically playing middle field closed. Some sort of man match thing with the two and the three. There's nobody winning. That's the thing on the perimeter with this game. It, you know, it's one thing to do an evaluation with a quarterback who's got a bunch of guys who are wide open that he's missing. It's another to say, hey, the defense has given us two middle fingers and we can't get anybody open. And so what am I supposed to do? I, I love the mechanics at the top, you know, First read to the left, no. Back to the right, no. Get vertical. Protect the ball. Protect yourself. Nice. Definitely tell he played baseball. It's a nice slide. A little Ty Cobb action, actually. You'd be surprised how many quarterbacks didn't play baseball that can't slide and or wear knee, knee braces. and It's like putting the brakes down. Variation of four verticals. And this is just a bummer. It's funny, I recently watched a video on how the run and shoot does this three by one vertical thing or divide or whatever they want to call it. And it didn't make sense to me when I was watching it. And it doesn't make sense to me right now when they're throwing it. I'm sure there are many elements on film of it working. 
But to me, the spacing is not great enough on this middle field player. So whatever they call it, divide, it's three by one, four verticals. Vertical, 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 vertical. The problem is, is in three by one, like in all verticals, the element of, of four verticals that I love the most is the spacing. So if you're this tight and you run what we're going to say, because it's middle field closed, you want to basically all four verticals is trying to do in zone is put a two on one on someone and stretch them as fast and as deep down the field as you can. Well, if you're running this thing near or up the hash and you're coming up and threatening this guy just across his face, this is enough space. What is it like in, you know, a third of the field that a middle field player can get to. You want to put a little bit more space between them, in my opinion, and make this thing almost like splitting the difference between the hash and the numbers, and then coming all the way across and hitting outside the hash over here. That's a stretch that one player can't make down the middle of the field. But when they're tight enough up the tracks and near the other track, I feel like one middle field player can adjust and baseball turn and go make this thing, especially if you're not going to throw it on time and you're going to chuck it down the field. And when you chuck it, you get a gust and it comes off a little fluttery. He's throwing this thing from the 44. One, two, three. Big hitch, move around, late. Middle field player goes back, hits him in the chest. You know, so I get it that I don't know the nuance of the run and shoot four verticals, but this ain't it. Whether it's his footwork being late, the decision to throw it, the ball, the trajectory. None of it's going to work on Sundays. Does he have to move? Yeah, 55 shows some color flash. Move. You know, that's a bad look. Let's see if I can see 10. The middle the middle field player in baseball turns, that, that thing hits him in the chest. So, not a great look. Next series, 2 by 2 you know, just a little hitch or option route. Love the quick reset footwork wise here. Once shuffle, boom, on him. Again, to me, you know, without having a total understanding of the footwork, when he, you know, quarter rolling like this, having people in your face, so quarter rolling to the side of the back, having people in your lap, it just makes life tough. Empty three by two, got some pressure issues potentially. Drop out, doesn't matter. We still have potential protection issues because we get a free runner through the A gap for goodness sake. I'm not sure what the right guard's doing. Whole right side actually. Nice job just saving the play, to be honest with you. So again, you get an empty. The most important thing for a quarterback is always the protection. You got to know where you're going to be hot. Usually what side you're going to be hot on. It looks like they're all going to the left, which would make you hot off 38. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because the right side just doesn't even move. It's a bad feeling having a free runner through the A gap. Nice job just catching it, saving the play. Not saving the play, but saving a disaster. Now we're in a long yardage situation. We get a little roll out here with a little spin move. You know, again, we got a free runner running right up through the A or B gap. At some point, you know, this is, it's not on the quarterback. You know, the left guard looks a little confused more than a few times. It's a big dude. All bad. That's a bad feeling. So second quarter now. Let's see what the score is. I think 17 to 3. 17 to 3. First down. Closed. Man, we're better than you. Again, a little variation of scissors up top. Man, this is an RPO with a variation of scissors. Yeah, it is. Get the left guard illegally downfield. 
that's a tough decision. I mean, not a lot of good options here at all. Not sure who he's reading or why he pulled that thing. I'm going to guess it's 44. Yeah, I mean, he's looking right at 44. 44 goes with the run. Now he waits. It's second window. So normally, and the number one is running this. So normally you'd want to put this, we're reading 44 with the RPO. First window to a slant. Second window to a slant, really tough in an RPO because you got these two one-on-one -on -one locked base blocks or whatever you want to call it on the backside of this RPO, splitting the thing right down the middle. But to wait for this second window throw, really tough. 44's having a nice game after, I think he was the same guy that was struggling in the Jordan Love film I watched. How about the umpire? Get down. Look, he's looking right at the left guard too. You got to call that, buddy. Oh, is that picks from 98? No way. Nice play by 44. That's a, that's a bad decision. There's a lot of black around there. Look at the effort by 98. So close. Again, decision making there. Don't love. But again, I don't love the scheme either. Three by one. Middle field closed. Man. No, middle field open. Basically the opposite of what I'm saying every time. A little short in route on the outside. Nice job getting to that. Good accurate throw. From the pocket. Again, these little, the run and shoot where you're checking one side, coming all the way back to the other side. To me, Tozy. Right here, this popping up. You see the see him change his eye level, his shoulder level right here. It's really hard to be accurate when you pop up this much. It's just hard. Try doing anything where you move your eye level that much to be consistent at it. You know, whether you're hitting a golf club, shooting a free throw, hitting a baseball, hitting a softball for some of y'all, it's just hard. You would never do that. And it's you know, it makes life way more difficult on yourself. RPO, zone read, pull it. Oh, you know, you'd love to see him be a little bit more athletic than this. You would think that you would be able to make this guy miss, and get a little bit more than that. That should be a first down. Left, definitely left some meat on the bone here with this thing. We're reading 44. Zone read. He comes down. Easy pull. Love to see him make this guy miss. 25. Nice tackle. You'd, you'd hope to see more athleticism in a in a dynamic, you know, quarterback prospect, I would hope. Footwork-wise, here we get a little bounce back for some reason. You know, he feels that right tackle kind of falling in his face. Again, pretty consistent with his accuracy on these five-yard routes. You know, I don't want to beat it into a, you know, a bit of a dead horse here, but that's a, look at that. That's a bad feeling. Right tackle. That's excellent footwork. That's hard to do. This is pretty rare. Especially when you're quarter rolling into that. Is he quarter rolling into it too? Eh, not really. Man, that's nice. Benefit of being on your toes right there. Again, doesn't impact the accuracy on these sh shorty throws. Really nice, quick, agile, quick twitchy right there. Oh, that's a dangerous throw. A little quick out to the top. You know, again, I, I, I don't know the, the footwork well enough to say exactly what it is, but I can tell you that it's really hard to throw a speed out. Is that a speed out? That's a borderline quick out, whatever. A rolled out when you have three and a hitch. You're just going to be late. He goes from the, what, 34 up top? 10 yard, really 8 to 10 yard. You know, that's almost always going to be a three no hitch or shuffle throw. Just going to be a little late, a little bit behind him. Corner's able to make a nice play. But to me, this, you know, is this on the offense, the concept, the footwork? Is he doing his own thing? I don't know. But I can tell you that you're not going to, you're not going to be very successful throwing those type of outs with that type of footwork. Third down forever. 
two by two. It'll feel closed. Zone this time. Oh man, got this guy wide open to the bottom of the field. We'll switch release, swap, whatever they call it. Oh man, if he misses that thing by 10 yards, does he get hit? Again, full field read. He gets hit late, but that he misses that throw. Oh my goodness, that guy catch it over the wrong shoulder. Let me go back one more time. So this is to the outside wide receiver. And really it looks like they're just running a variation of all go here, or whatever they call their all go here with a switch release in the outside. Now the thing about it is normally you want to throw this thing down the line that the wide receiver picks. You don't want to miss and have him turn his back almost the other way. It's almost like a reverse curl way down the field or a reverse back shoulder. But it, man, that's a big, that's a, that's a difficult, difficult throw. Going looking right and then coming back and throwing this thing left. But the run and shoot will stretch it vertically like this. See if we can see a little bit more what goes on. No to the right. Look at the footwork. Nice. Shuffle away from that. Again, the quarter rolls with the tackle pressure. When you're getting blasted, losing the line of scrimmage is tough. And someone's going to hit you in the legs. Did you get that thing off? See, that's what I'm talking about, where he has to turn back the other way here over his left shoulder. Oh, man, what a catch. Does he really catch it? Ooh. Nice. Really nice throw. That's a big time play. Give him a chance at least. Hear me say that all the time on down the field throws. Give him a chance. Middle field closed, man. Again, a little pick on the number three up top for the flat. You know, a little bit behind him. Not a little bit. It's behind him. Nice job by that DB coming down. And again, when I'm evaluating quarterbacks, I'm always looking for guys who aren't putting their guys in risk. You very rarely want to see a quarterback get a guy hit. And this is getting someone hit. Throw it behind them and getting them smacked. The time they celebrate, again, quarter roll with the tackle right in your face. You know, it's difficult. You just get arm barred right into his face. There it is. Ball's behind him. The DB puts his shoulder pad right in his gut. Nice tackle. Yeah, see how he's staying down like that? That's something you just don't want to see. You don't ever want to do that to anybody on a football field, but when it's a quarterback has the responsibility of the ball location to protect his guys, his players. Here's that same RPO. We've seen him run a handful of times now. The double slant, outside guy, wide open. He's got a knack for that. He makes that thing look easy. That's not an easy throw. So we're reading 48 on the RPO. It's a little wide or outside zone to the our left, their right. 48 comes down, moves it all, gets into the fit, pull it out. And this might be a good one to see the release here. So the release here, this thing is long, dropping it down below his hip, and then he's pushing it out as opposed to lifting it vertically. You know, you have to bring it back at some point. And to me, you know, you want to be on what most people call vertical L's when you go to throw that thing. That thing is like a, you know, a obtuse angle for all you cats in geometry class right now. Again, like the pocket presence. Get out on the perimeter, got a chance to make a play and misses it. You know, that everything is great up until the chance to have a touchdown pass. Nothing's there. Don't force it in the red zone. Good decision making. Stay alive. Get a chance to make a play on the boundary. Right here, that guy on the back line. You got to do it. See the wide receiver's hat down there at the bottom left pylon? No, you can't see it. There it is. But you got to make that throw. NFL quarterback is going to make this throw. That guy in the back line, nobody in front of him. Got to give him a chance. Never in history. Tough. But I, I do love the pocket presence. No to the left. No back the other way. Out on the perimeter. Love to see him keep two hands on the ball right there. Where he goes to drop one hand off. And then again, the release, just he looks like he just pushes that thing out of bounds. That thing comes off his hand funky. But I would say you have to make that play. Or you should make that play. Three by one. Getting a little flat for a touchdown. It's the same play they ran just to, where he got that guy smoked a couple plays ago. Now he's afraid and he misses it. Does he drop it or miss it? 
Looks like both. A little low down at the knee. Probably love to make that catch if you're the wide receiver and probably love to have a better ball if you're the quarterback. I mean, that looks like probably like a drop. So miss a touchdown there. Three by one again. Gonna feel closed. Man. Try for the back shoulder with a little rub action up top. You know, you'd love to just throw it right there. You throw it right at him. Uh, again, you know, I don't want to get into a run and shoot debate here because I'm not an expert. But what is happening to the tackles for Hawaii is, is not making me a fan of, of quarter rolling in and getting somebody right in my face to throw a back shoulder. You know, to throw a back shoulder, you just almost catch it and turn and throw it. Shouldn't have to worry about a pass protection issue off the edge. And this isn't an issue. This is just one guy getting pushed into your lap. Either way, you got to make that throw. There's just too many wide misses. You know, you're always looking for, what's the movie called? Patriot? Aim small, miss small. These are a lot of aim wide, miss wider throws. Man, middle field close. You, you don't see a little lot of middle field close man at the five yard line, but. Really nice shot by the corner down here. It doesn't help that the guy falls over himself. Because he falls, he's able to see this flat coming and really collision this thing. You know, you'd love to see a little bit more variety in what you're trying to do here. You can only throw so many flats and outs. Again, footwork-wise, close to a catch and throw. Again, quarter roll, three-step quarter roll. You know, I know this is their offense. It just sometimes to me it struggles to match up with with what a lot of other people do scheme wise with timing and I, I get it that there's a lot of read elements of the run and shoot but it makes the evaluation part that much harder for some of these guys quarter roll again a little like stop route whatever they call this read route on the outside whether he wins or he can stop throwing this thing to me again miss you know yeah it's not he's not open by any means. This is a throw that everybody in the NFL makes. This is basically what a lot of people call a nine stop or a stop route. You're just gonna run a fade angle and then you just stop this thing, whether it's nine, ten yards, every offense is a little different. You put it right on their outside shoulder and they hinge back and throw it away. And you gotta make sure you throw it up, you know, so that they can catch the thing as opposed to down around their their ankles and Tebow in this thing. Can't have a slider come out. You got to throw it right at him. And right here, this thing looks like it just nose dives a little on him. One of the things that I that I you know coming from someone who had a borderline three quarter release, it, one of the things is when the nose comes down, you know it really exaggerates a ball dying on you. And that thing looks like it just slides off the outside of the plate. So three by one. Let me see. Sums up with that. Three and two split up top. Middle field closed. Again, they, they're loving this matchup. Again, back shoulder, too high. Again, wide misses. These are throws that you're going to have to make in the NFL. The guys are open even when they're covered, and you throw them open. You know, that thing's 11 feet high. Got to give him a chance. Back shoulder, you throw that thing like he's not even there. Right at him. Again, quarter roll, protection, massive protection issues. Get on the perimeter, get what you can get, throw it away. Make a good decision. Nice job. But again, the protection issues are are, are difficult. Like I, I can't tell you. It sure looks like this is the running back's responsibility. But for all I know, it could be the left guard too. Either way, someone's wrong. And it's all bad when that happens. Nice, nice athleticism. This is actually the fastest I think he's looked on film. Opens up his gate a little bit. Throw it away. You know, one of those us or nobody throws. Three by one. Again, eh, this to me looks like we're holding on to the ball a little bit. I'm not sure. He looks like he's looking outside. Comes back, 
you know, there's just no good options. If anything, oh, this is a strip. If anything, this ball needs to go down to the number three a little bit earlier, right? If he doesn't like it on the outside, to that out, down to the number three, which he's done a great job of most of the night. He holds onto the ball. Somebody puts their hands on it, and they got him. And this is just, uh, now it's kind of combining in on itself here for him. Okay, two hands on the ball, really nice. You know, just just the time clock right here. You got to. You got to do something. You can't just stay back there like a statue. You'd love to see him right here, kind of dip his right shoulder, climb up in the pocket. You see how much space there is right there? Just the feel for the pocket that you see a lot of guys do, especially where you see quarterbacks in just about every drill that you ever see on TV or on YouTube. They're dipping that right shoulder, climbing, resetting. You got to do it. You can't just stay back there because this is what happens. People tee off. Just one of the weaknesses of, of drop back or these quarter roll things is that the defense is going to know where you're at just about every play. Two by two. We're in the fourth quarter now. A little out to the boundary. Again, this is a nice job. Again, we got major protection issues. Guys running through free, smashed. Nice job. This is a this is a good throw. 25, I think, wraps around. They get a little cross dog. No action for it. This is what happens when your left guard is a little lost. Oversets. Can't pass that thing off fast enough. Gets smacked. Again, I love the fact he's leaving it up where he can make that catch. It's close, but one of the better throws as far as I'm considered on the, on the sideline. Nice job again getting through his reads here. This looks like an RPO three by one. All the way out to basically what is considered the check down. Again, nice little arm flick. Got good vision. Obviously got a great control of these RPO things. He's able to get through those things really quick. Again, that thing comes out to me a bit like a 7-iron, a little high, as opposed to driving that thing all the way out there. But again, at this point, they're getting smoked. You know, Losing by 28, fourth quarter. Here we go. Here's some pocket presence, what I'm talking about. At the back of the drop. Climb up, up, get vertical. You'd love to see him get a little bit, a little bit faster with the escape. Obviously, a little bit more explosive, but fundamentally here, two hands on the ball, climbing, climbing, go. Nice job. See him tuck that ball away right at that last second. Feel somebody behind him, tuck it, cover it up, break that tackle. You know, it's 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 difficult in these games where you want to. You know, you're playing for a championship. You want to be playing at a high level, and it just feels like it's imploding because you're losing at the line of scrimmage. You feel like your guys in the perimeter aren't winning. You know, that's a lot of excuses for you to have to continue to play well and make good decisions. This is an RPO. You know, you just take an L at right guard. Guy puts his head down. He's leaning, gets beat, gets smoked. Now you're getting sacked on what should have just been a run at worst. So, yeah, is it all on him? Absolutely not. But it, uh, is the accuracy stuff on him? Yeah, it really is. Oh, I put this one in there because there's an amazing double team right here. Watch the right go, right tackle. This is a dart play. So we're pulling the, the left tackle, but the right tackle says 90. Boom! <laughs> so we're pulling the left tackle all the way around off the double team. It's a cool concept. This is a guy I really want you to watch. He's going to crush 90 and then come off to 25 to seal. Does a really nice job. We're pulling the tackle. That's why it's called dart. Tackle around. Here he comes. Kick out. And we're off to the races. Thought there were definitely some opportunities to run the ball here in this game. Boom! Now, not the greatest kick by that tackle. Again, 99 is just wrecking havoc. And they find a way to finally get in the end zone. Nice double team, though. So, seven minutes left. Two by two, still an opportunity to evaluate, to work their craft, to see if there's some things kind of pop off the screen. And right here is a great, which should be a great throw to this comeback. On the move, you know, an opportunity again. Put it on him, run on to your right, show off throw. Instead, he throws that sucker never in history outside the white. You know, you just can't have every one out of five sideline throws be a completion. You got to find a way 
you know, to be more accurate on these throws. You can see the ball comes off his hand a little funky, a little flutter to it. You'd love for them to make that catch, but you can make that way easier for your receivers. Significantly easier. So again, you just don't, you, of all the guys that I've evaluated on this channel so far this year, you know, there are just way more negative plays in this game than I have seen in many of the other games. Now, yes, it's just one game sample size. But like right here, this inside fade, this this has got a chance to be a touchdown up top to the number two. Now, granted, there's someone in your face, you know, because your left guard is taking another L. Oh my gosh. But you got to make that throw. You lay that thing right down the line, throw it right on the three, and that thing's a touchdown. Instead, you push that thing all the way out to the boundary. You miss that thing by, you know, over five yards. Quick little play action or RPO. You know, just losing at the line of scrimmage all night. But you got to make that throw. You throw that thing on the three, it's a touchdown. You throw that thing on the sideline, and it's incompletion. And now that's the second time that he's had to turn the wrong way on a seam route. You just don't you, you don't see the accuracy issues like that very often from a guy who's going to be a, a an NFL quarterback for a long time. A little shuffle screen here. Love this concept, whatever they call it. I always think of it as like the Reggie Bush screen back in the day. Come out, fake that bluff, flip it to him, get vertical. Nice job. And there really aren't a lot of screens in this offense. Two by two, middle field closed, man, double middle fingers. Nobody's open. You know, where are you supposed to go? Maybe up top to the little whip route by the number two. But again, you got a black flashing right in your face. You're just losing at the line of scrimmage. You got no good answers. Quarter roll, no. Back around. There he is. Again, they can't pass off the stunt up front. Left guard can't come off. And that's what happens. Just sack after sack, after hit, after collision, after missed throw. Now the game's way out of hand. We're still throwing it. Again, nice job. The underneath stuff is as consistent as, as it possibly could be. Again, we're looking left first. Again, it... No, back to the right, all his cleats in the ground, up over the top, raise up. Really nice job. You know, he's competing the entire time. You know, I think he's playing hard. Obviously up against probably a superior opponent. But some of these throws like this, this is just chucking up a prayer. This is a go to the field. You know, that's collision. That's a obviously a penalty down here. Better be called on the 49 by the corner down here to the bottom. But there it is. But again, to me, he, he wasn't winning. He's just catching that and chucking it. And that thing comes off a little flat, more than a little flat. Next one up, only two left. A little out again. Out on the sideline. Same throw we saw him barely get in earlier. This time it's late, high, not a catch. I mean, this is at this point, it's a pattern for stuff on the sidelines where he's struggling to be able to get it up and down fast enough, whether it's the footwork, whether it's the how they're teaching it, whatever it is, it's not good enough to be able to be consistent at the next level. And again, the line let him down. They lost the line of scrimmage. Nice job being able to get outside and at least make a play. And this is what I'm talking about where he kept competing. You know, the game is out of reach at this point. But he's competing, trying to find a way. Will this team to win? Be creative. I love seeing this stuff. But as a whole, difficult. All right, that's a wrap. Cole McDonald struggling against Boise State for the Mountain West Championship game. I think that there were some flashes. And there are some things that I think uh, can build into a really strong NFL career. Now, I think it's going to be an uphill battle. I really do. I think the arm action of the throwing release I think is going to be an issue for a lot of people I think the offense that he comes out of is going to be an issue for a lot of people yes very productive but it's created a bunch of very productive quarterbacks at the collegiate level that hasn't translated to the league or professionally so all of those things working against him I think he's also got some technique elements that I'm talking about from the footwork element and then in addition to just kind of the sense within the pocket whether you're holding on to the ball too long the decision making the accuracy i think is the one thing that just jumps off the film when you watch it from start to finish there are just too many throws that are being missed 
too wide. And so is it a thing that can be fixed? I don't know. You know, I'm not coaching them on a daily basis, but I would say that there definitely can be improved. I don't know. It can never be improved enough to make you a guy who sticks around a long time on Sunday. So let me know what you think in the video. Appreciate y'all hanging out all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. Appreciate it. See you next time. In addition, those badges change color the longer you're a member. Then plus you get to add, use these terrible emojis that I can't even say. Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, great one. Cole McDonald. Cole McDonald. Old McDonald. Old McDonald had a bomb.